Hey guys, this is Josh Nelson from Nelson Elder Care Law. I appreciate you joining me again today, Wednesday, every Wednesday at 3 for Live with a Lawyer, where I, Josh Nelson from Nelson Elder Care Law, is going to walk you through some of the things that we see every week that you might be too afraid to ask, or just some little legal nuggets that help you make sure you're better prepared. At Nelson Elder Care Law, we help protect you and your loved ones from the curveballs of life. We do that a lot of times with different things such as like maybe a trust. And a lot of people have a lot of questions about trust. And overall, one of the problems that really gives me a little bit of an irk is even people that have a trust often have questions about it. Just this week, we've had two potential new clients come in that really have pretty big problems. The problem that they have is that they have a trust and they don't know what it does. And that's pretty scary. Luckily, in this case, they got into us before it's too late because whenever we started really digging deep into it, the trust they had wasn't very good. And the way it wasn't very good was although everything in the words of the trust was what the family wanted, you know, if something happens to me, to my wife, if something happens to her, to my kids equally, one of my kids gets it over time versus just in a lump sum, the trust itself had the right language in it. But that's whenever we dug a little bit deeper, as we do with all of our clients, to make sure that it actually worked. And this is where the trust became a bad trust. So again, there's nothing wrong with the words. There's nothing wrong with the language. The problem was that it doesn't work the way the family intends it to. The family's got these trusts so that they can avoid probate. They are both revocable living trusts, which means that it still uses the people's social security numbers. They still have full control over it. But what they didn't do is what's called trust funding. And a lot of attorneys, unfortunately, drop the ball on this. They give you this beautiful binder, a couple beautiful envelopes of thick, hard stock paper, make you feel really confident. And you take that and you put it on your shelf at home. The problem with that is a lot of attorneys go ahead and just include a letter in there that says, great, Mrs. Smith, you've done your trust, now go fund it. And the scary part about that is I don't think most clients understand what go fund it means. I think that if we took a survey at the end of all estate planning meetings, most families would feel like it was done whenever you walk out of the attorney's office. Whenever you walk out of our office after your funding's complete, it is done but so many people leave this step off. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Funding is the actual process of putting assets into your trust. So whenever you go to the attorney's office and you create your trust, or maybe you've even done it on your own, one of the biggest next steps to making sure that things work is that they're actually controlled by the trust. And so is your house redeeded into your trust? Especially if you're a senior in Cobb or Cherokee County, that means that you also need to update your homeowner's insurance as well as this time of year before April 1st, you need to file for your homestead exemption if you're not paying school tax right now because a transfer to trust resets that unless you ask for it. One of the biggest problems then is if that deed does get in there, what about my bank accounts? What about my investment accounts? And what do I do with things like IRAs that don't go into the trust while I'm alive, but will need to be the beneficiary whenever I pass in a lot of cases? These are all things that your attorney should walk you through. If they haven't, you need to talk to somebody about making sure that your plan really works the way that you think it is. Unfortunately, there are families that we work with that don't come in and find out that their plans are broken before it's too late. And those people are the ones that are going through probate. They're the ones that walk in with a big, beautiful trust, and all of a sudden they realize nothing's in it. The bank accounts aren't controlled by it. The retirement accounts went straight to people that they weren't supposed to, or even worse, maybe one kid was added to a bank account as an owner, and now the rest of the kids don't get anything because by law it transfers to that kid. Those are the problems that we see the most that really scare me. It's sort of like the best analogy I've ever heard is, I can sell you a car at any price point. I can sell you a car that's cheap, I can sell you a car that's expensive based on your budget, but what I can't do is sell you a car that doesn't work, one that doesn't have brakes. Maybe your budget isn't even enough for air conditioning, but you still need brakes. And unfortunately, I think this is where a lot of estate planners go wrong, especially with trusts. 
is they say, let's go ahead and throw in the AC, let's do this trust, even though maybe it's not something that you understand the real cost of, and then to scrimp on the value, they leave out funding, and that's whenever you find out that, yeah, you're nice and cool while you're living, but as soon as you need to tap those brakes, they don't work. That's why funding is so important. It's what makes everything with your trust work. Like I said, these families that came in this week, the trust language was fine, but the reason it was a bad trust is because it wasn't really a plan. Nobody comes in trying to buy paper. Nobody just wants a trust to have a trust. What you're really looking for is an outcome, and the way you get that outcome is through funding. If you or somebody you know has an estate plan, especially a trust that maybe they're uncertain about, maybe you aren't sure if the stuff's in there, maybe you moved since the last time that you had your trust updated, and you just wanna make sure that your deed's in there, give us a call. We'll sit down with a member of our legal team, absolutely free, walk you through where you're at and where you might wanna to get to. Again, thanks for joining me on Live with the Lawyer. This is Josh Nelson from Nelson Undercare Law. Thanks and have a great day.